Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this little live stream guitar lesson. Um, this is yeah something I've done before. Um, some of you may remember we had a good little run of of these kind of we were doing them on Sunday mornings before, and I loved it. I always love um, opening up the guitar parts, like diving right into all the details of how I'm doing it. Um, it's a really important thing for me actually like because often when you're releasing music and you're putting music out there you talk about the themes of the music and you talk a lot about what the songs are about but you don't get a chance to go deep into the actual music itself and um, I think there's a lot of, of um, there's a lot of treasure in there um, whether or not you're technically a musician do you know what I mean like there's a lot to share for anybody I think we're going to work slowly through how I play Fever to the Form and how Fever to the Form works on a guitar part. So I figure during this like global lockdown, this, this global co cocooning, um, these guitar lessons could be quite a vibey thing for us to build. So yeah, I'm open to all your, all your suggestions. A couple of people have asked for my song Imogen which we can do at some point. Someone there just asked for Jaramadam. Great. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, if you're a total novice, or if, you're, if, you're, if you've got years of experience. I'm going to just teach it for everybody right now. So shall we start this? All right, let's start this lesson. Phoebe to the form, how to play it. Um, okay, so the first thing I think to start with about getting set with Phoebe to the form is just to talk for a moment about these capos here, right? So I'm using, um, I use a lot in, in my songs, I use a lot of, guitar, of uh, capos here. So this is the capo, and I place it across the strings um, to lift the level of the lowest note of the guitar. That's how the capos work. And um, what I'm doing in this song, it, the first thing to say, to dive into the specifics, what I'm doing in this song is normally you would put the capo like this and cover all the strings on the second fret. And what I'm doing with this song, really importantly, this is the first step I want you to understand at home, is that I'm doing something unusual, which is that I'm not covering all six strings, I'm covering five strings and leaving this low one open can you see that so all of the other strings here are covered the e the b the g the d and the a string in standard tuning that's the first thing it says well we are we're in standard tuning and the the strings are covered five strings are covered with the capo and this low e string is open all the way down to the bottom hope that's clear that's the first thing to say about the capo um, one final thing to say just about the capo is just so you know is that when I recorded this piece of music in the studio I'd already written it like this using this capo kind of configuration but I wanted to raise the pitch a small amount so that it was slightly higher for my singing so what I did don't panic, is I got a second capo um, and the recording of Fever to the Form has one capo covering the bottom and then this same configuration where I put the second capo covering five strings and leaving the low E string open. Now, this is not what we're going to do today, so I'm not expecting any of you at home to have to have two capos. I just want you to know this, that if you want to play along to Fever to the Form, uh, the recording, you should be aware that it's a semitone higher than how I'm teaching it today. I'm teaching it today a semitone lower for simplicity's sake so that you don't have to have 
two capos. But you will have to do just one capo. I mean, there is a way of playing a song without any capos, and we can get into that. Um, but for the minute, I'm just going to teach it with one capo. And as I said, this one capo goes here on the second fret, covering five of the six strings, leaving the low E open. And someone here very reasonably asks me, you can just do a drop D tuning rather than doing this, this, this capo situation, right? And I'm really glad you just mentioned that because the reason why I'm doing this, this low capo thing, just the reason why is so that I can achieve a drop D, have, which is to say have this E string a tone lower than the rest of the guitar. But when you do that, any guitarist out there will know, when you do that, you have to, you have to modify the rest of your shapes. Like you might, I wanna make a G shape, yeah? So this is a G shape. This is a G shape, but when you have changed your E string to a drop D, you have to make it like this. You have to modify your guitar shapes when you start detuning the strings. And I didn't want to do that in this song. So in order to have a drop D, essentially a low E string that is a whole tone lower than the rest of the other strings, but without having to then modify my standard positions, this is why we are working with this capo configuration. I'll say that again. In answer to someone's question there about why can't you just de de down tune the low E string rather than doing this capo thing, I'm explaining why we're using this capo thing. We're using this capo situation, five strings covered and one string open, because I wanted to achieve a drop D effect, which is to say that the low, the lowest string here is a whole tone longer than the rest of the strings here. But I didn't want to start detuning the string because when you do that, you then can't play your standard positions in the same way. You have to start modifying them. So that is why I came up with this actually very simple but slightly complicated whole thing about the capos. So um, that's the starting point. This is like getting set to play the song. Okay, so we're getting set here. Um, uh, we're getting set with the with how to play Fever to the Form, and the first thing is to get the capo straight. Very good. It seems like this is being understood, and for all of you really experienced guitarists out there, forgive me speaking uh, quite slowly about these details, but I want to pitch this class so that everybody can understand it and some of these technical details re require me um, to just to explain it for a minute. All right, so the capo is on the second fret covering five strings, leaving the low string open like this. Okay, wicked. Now the thing about Fever to the Form is that it's very, very simple, okay? Once we've got this whole Kappa business set and sorted, the actual song is really, really simple. I think most people can feel that, like when you listen to Fever to the Form, it doesn't really change much. It's not a very tricksy song, it's not a very clever song with lots of like clever chords or clever moves. The whole song just starts small with me singing at the beginning, at the beginning with the with the guitar strumming, and it just grows, it mushrooms. It grows and grows and grows until the drums come in, the strings are going, the, the octaves on the voice are going, the synthesizers are going, but all, all we're doing at the end is the same as we were doing at the beginning, but all this extra layers come in. And what that means is, is that Fever to the Form is ultimately a, a very simple song. And 
it gets away with being very, very simple. So I'm going to show you next the three basic chords that you can play the whole of Fever to the Formed to. We'll start with the kind of the cheat. OK, we're going to start with the cheat, with the basic. You, there are three chords you can play to get away with all of Fever to the Formed. I'll show you the fourth chord, which which is the only kind of uh, the only other thing that happens. But before I show you the chords in the left hand, I'm going to start with my right hand and the strumming pattern, just so that we start first of all rhythmically. We're going to leave the harmony to one side for a minute. We're going to leave the chords to one side for a minute, and we're just going to start with the strumming of the the right hand the rhythm i think somebody a second ago in the comments asked me is this song in six eight timing um it might be yeah, i think it probably is it's either that or three four it's kind of a waltz a one two three two two three one two three two two three um i'm quite an intuitive musician i'm a very instinctive musician and I, my music theory is very limited i know that this is this song has kind of threeness it is in three, it's kind of got a threeness. Whether that's a six, eight or a three, four, there'll be other people out there who've got um, better musical, theoretical knowledge than me. I definitely know it's kind of a, it's in, it has threeness about it. Fever to the form in the strumming. It's one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. So I'm going to take my left hand and I encourage you to do this at home. This will be the first thing that we all do together, having already got our capos set here on the second, on the second fret in this way. The first thing I want us to do is to just cover the strings with our left hand. If you're left handed, flip this around if you're right handed, if, if you're, sorry, if you're right handed, You'll be doing the same as if, if you're at home and left-handed, then flip it around and do it the other way. Um, take your chord-making hand and just place it lightly over the strings so that we're not really making any chords, we're just dulling the strings. Okay, so we're just going to play purely the rhythmical, percussive element of Fever to Deform first. This is going to be our, our starting point once we've got set. We're going to do this this rhythm aspect. So we're not going to worry about chord shapes for the minute. We're just going to mute the strings in the left hand. And then it's all about the right hand now, or should I say, if you're left-handed, the strumming hand. And we're going to go like this. I'm going to just do it slowly, and you can start to copy me. So it goes... Is that making sense? Can you hear that at home? Um, someone's just asking me what kind of guitar am I playing here with? And just to be clear, I'm using a Spanish flamenco guitar, but this guitar lesson can be taught on any kind of guitars. If you've got a steel string guitar at home, if you've got a electric guitar of any kind, it's equally just as good on those. So don't worry too much about what kind of guitar you're playing. I'm using a Spanish guitar, flamenco, flamenco guitar. I'm going to do that again, back to the strumming pattern here. I'll say it again, right? The strumming goes... So what there is there is... There's lots of notes. Up, down, 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 up, down. There's lots of notes and certain ones are emphasised with a slightly stronger hit so it goes can you tell me here if you can hear that all right can you hear how that's sounding in the details
in answer to someone's question here, um, I will be uploading this to my Instagram TV so that you can keep returning to it and watch it in your own time. And I will also be uploading this to YouTube so that uh, people can find this lesson there on YouTube as well. Okay, cool, so you can hear what I'm doing here. I'm hitting, thank you Dan for asking, uh, I'm making contact with the strings almost entirely with my index finger. I'm kind of holding, supporting it with my thumb and middle finger. And I'm going, and that's hard to see, but that is basically this part of my index finger. The nail, the top nail is like, uh, is like this. That part of my index finger is what's making the contact with the strings. Uh, I can see there my friend Nikki P is asking me, is it the down strokes or the up strokes that I'm emphasizing to get the beat? I'm always emphasizing down strokes to get the beat, but some of those down strokes are here on the lower strings and others of those down strokes are here on the upper strings, on the higher strings. So you've got is a low sound and is a high sound. Almost like this is like the kick, the kick drum, and this is like the snare drum. And it goes, there's the low one and here's the high one there. There's the low one and there's the high one. So they're both, on the downbeat. They're both on the downbeat, but they're on different strings so that they... Okay, good. It looks, it looks like people are telling me they're getting this. starts with a down, it starts with a down strum, down, down, okay, dum. so you've got this, bat, dum, bat, dum, it's a bat, kick drum, snare drum, boom, a bat, and then in between is all the hi-hats, bat, dun, dat, Okay. All right, this, this is good. Looks like people are getting this. Now, the cool thing about this strumming pattern is that it basically doesn't change throughout the whole song. This is like, this is almost like the, the, how to explain it? It's almost like the, the structure, the lattice or the trellis through which the plant grows. I don't know if that's a useful image. This, it's like a, a rhythmical framework that always stays the same upon which all of the rest of the song is hung, or all of the rest of the song takes its structure. It's a scaffold, if you will. Thank you very much. It's like a scaffold. Okay, so, and, and, and so now that we've taught you this, we're taking it obviously step by step, but if you're getting these early steps, you're getting large chunks of the whole song. Okay, just to absorb this strumming pattern is to, is to just do 20% of, of the whole song like that. So we're making good ground here. Okay, so once again, we are, the strumming pattern of the song for the whole song is more or less. But how do I know what you're thinking? Maybe I thought it before. You can hear.
here we're slightly slower maybe that's why i at your window so you get the idea okay that is the rhythmical is, is that's basically all of the rhythmical aspect of fever to the form are you guys ready to go to the left hand or to the chord hand and start looking at some of the chord shapes Let me know if you're ready to go to the chords. All right. Okay, wicked. Paul is ready. Let's do this. Um, Okay, great. So the chords for Fever to the Form, there are three chords to the verses that are spread over four bars. <clears throat> so the first chord is basically an F shape. <clears throat> the first chord is an F shape. I want you to see the end of my guitar there. The second chord is an A minor shape. And the third chord is a G major shape. Okay, I'll say that again. The first chord, and I'm, I'm gonna break this down and go much into much more detail, but just to give, to start with, it, with with a bunch of information for a second, the first chord is an F major shape. The second chord is an A minor shape. And the third chord is a G major shape. Okay, so the first chord is an F major shape. The second is an A minor shape, and the third chord is a G major shape. Now, just to be clear, the reason why I'm saying F major shape or A minor shape is because with the capo on, of course, like our whole reference point has moved up a whole tone. So really, this F shape is actually a G, and this A minor shape is actually it's actually a B minor. Like if you were sitting next to a pianist and you wanted to tell him the chord, you tell him. It's a B minor, and this G major shape is in fact an A major. Yeah, so we're all a whole tone up. But continuing from this point forward, I'm just gonna talk about what shape it is, yeah? This is a very guitarist thing. For a keyboardist out there, they don't think this way, but this is, we're all guitarists here, right? And this is a very guitar thing, um, is that we, we work in shapes. Okay, so from this point forward, we'll say the first chord is a F major shape. Now, to go into this first chord, F major, normally you play an F major shape with a bar chord and you do it like that, yeah? Are you with me? But for this fever to the form, that ain't the way we're gonna do it. Because what we need to do is do our F shape like this, bring your thumb over to that to make the low F note and then and then make the rest of the shape like this, yeah? So that is our first chord for you to the form. It's an F shape. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, Poet Charlie has reminded me here that um, this morning, my actually my wife drew these very handy guitar tabs for these chords. So you can see, I posted them both in my feed and in my Instagram stories um the actual guitar tabs so you can look at, find those guitar tabs i encourage you they're super clear um and they, and they even explain like she's made even like a little handy note saying thumb use your thumb um <clears throat> so the way i do it is i is i cover both those high strings there with that one finger i put that one there i put this one here and then i cover it over with my thumb and, and that's um that's my f shape Okay, good. 
And the reason why we do no barcode, right? So someone here is asking me why no barcode, right? Okay, so fever to the form, right? I think one of the reasons why it works as a very simple pattern is because, yes, we've got these three chord shapes, right? So where the musical madness, we live by one of the two, by one of the two. So go on, fill your heart up with gladness. Not a moment too soon. Not a moment too soon. Right? Those are the main chords. And if it was just like that, then you could you you could make the F shape with your with your bar chord. But what's happening in the fever to the form guitar part is there's this one string, there's this one kind of motif which is happening. Da dum 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 da dum 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 da dum. It's actually an octave higher than that. Ba dum 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 da dum 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 da dum dum dum. Which is the E string is going on and off. And because we want to make our F shape, but still have this finger on the G string going on and off. This is why it wouldn't work if we barred it. Listen to this. Right? That ain't fever to the form, is it? I mean, right? So you can't bar it. I hope this is making sense. It's like this. After two bars there, oh, one, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three, three, whatever it is. <laughs> After two bars there, we move to our A minor shape, right? But guess what? We keep this finger, we keep this motif going, which is to say, the way I'm doing it here, my fourth finger comes off and on. Yeah, this fourth finger is coming. Off and on and then when we go to our G shape we make the G shape in such a way so that the little finger is here my fourth finger is right up the top here and my index finger is there on the second fret which is not the most normal way of making a G shape but the reason we do it is that this middle finger here is available to come on and off that G string and continue that motif throughout the whole pattern. Okay, so once again, we have an F major shape for two bars. We have an A minor shape for two bars and we have a G major shape for two bars. Sorry, for one bar. But what's continuing through them, always steady, ever unchanging, just constantly there, is this activity on the G string, which is just going, no matter which chord it's on, it's just going. So listen to this. Simplified the right hand now, but okay. So yeah, I'll explain all these chords again. I'm just hoping that you're getting the basic kind of idea here, right? That you've got this one object. I call it an object, right? Which is the motif. Da -dum, dum, 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 dum. And this object is not changing. And it is, it is lit from three different points. From the F major shape for two bars, from the A minor shape for one bar, and for the G major shape for one bar. And I think this is part of the inner psychology of why fever to the form can be very simple. Because something about 
an object not changing and its context consistently changing is very satisfying to the ears. I didn't think about this when I created this, I just did it. But having lived with it for years and years and kind of wondered like, why does this song always work? There's a few things which I can share today with you as to why I think Fever to the Form gets away with being so simple. And in getting away with being so simple, it speaks to people's hearts. It goes through to the emotions. So one of the first reasons is this little device here, right? With the chord sequences, they're changing. There's three different positions over four different bars. They're changing and yet one thing doesn't change. And this, this kind of tension between what does change and what doesn't change is, is right at the heart of this, yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna explain to someone this G street, this, uh, this G shape, right? So the first chord is the F shape. I spent a minute explaining that. Okay, that's the first one. The second chord is the easiest. It's an A minor shape. And you keep your finger coming off. And then this G shape, but I see a couple of people here asking me about it, okay? So it's your normal G, G shape, yeah? So that is, but the way I'm doing it is I'm putting my little finger, it's on the third fret up from the capo, one, two, three, on the high E. Then everything is left open until my index finger is on the second fret of the A string. And my ring finger, my fourth finger here, is on the third fret of the low E string. Can you see that? That is my G shape. And what that does is it leaves available, my middle finger is carrying the duty of continuing that object on the G string. Da -dum, dum 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 So we go like this. see that yeah I just want to say again to be really clear for all of all of you out there for whom this is a lot of information don't worry about this being live I'm gonna uh, post this in my um, IGTV after this so that and I'm gonna post it on YouTube as well so that you can um, take your time with it revisit it in your own time and uh, yeah you don't have to feel the pressure okay so, someone here called Meg is asking me, do I keep my thumb over when I'm playing the A minor chord shape or the G major chord shape? No is the answer. You only need to put your thumb over on the first chord, which is the F major shape, yeah? All right, I hope this is all making sense. Um, we're like, we're deep in it now. We're, we're basically, we're at the point where if you can understand this, you've got the cheat version of Fever to the Form. I mean, in a way, the, the full cheat version of the Fever to the Form, you could play along with me if, you didn't even do this on-off business with the G string. You could play. If by one of the two, by one of the two, so go on, fill your heart up with gladness. Okay, I'm basically, I just want to get, for the, for the beginners out there, I want to give you the absolute, minimum that you need in order to, to jam along with us today and to jam along with um, Fever to the Form in general. And what that would be for the very basic sort of cheap version of Fever to the Form would be understand that this rhythm, this picking pattern goes That's the first thing to understand. The second thing would be to just get the F shape, the A minor shape and the G major shape. And then you could just jam with us. And if by one of the two, by one of the two. Okay, so if you've got even that bare bones basic stuff, then you're in. You're playing Fever to the Form. 
we've done. Like you, 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 you've learned how to pay people to the form. Now, by degrees, we can we can embellish it. We can go more technical for those who want to, for those who are able to. We can go more and more technical. Um, we can go more and more technical if you, if 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 from here basically. And the first step to go more and more technical. Okay, we've got about twenty minutes more to this class, so. Um, the first step to go more and more technical, as I said, is uh, is getting within these chord shapes, is having that one finger which constantly keeps the motif going. tricky chord shapes in here if your fingers aren't used to doing it that G shape is going to be a bit weird I know for those of us out there who've got smaller hands making this full F shape with your thumb over that's a tricky one too um, someone asked me uh, have I got any advice for um, someone who can't make that that F shape going over I would say you can just you can just play without strumming the low string and you can just do it like this Direct your strumming hand away from the low string. Don't even try and make that, just don't make it. So yeah, the, that's it, the constant hammer on. That, that's that's the, the technical phrase I'm looking for. There's a hammer on, off, on, off, right? The hammer goes on and it comes off. Someone asked me would F major 7, seven not work, um, which I suppose is like because you're finding that low string. I don't think so, because if I play an F major 7, have a listen. I don't think it sounds right. We live by one of the two. That F major 7 shape sound, nah, it's, it's the wrong colour. Okay, so there's, there's one main thing I want to teach you now uh, before the end of this class. And once I've showed that to you, we can play around with plussing some of you in to have a little jam together, see how that works for the final 10 minutes. But um, So tell me, like maybe there's, there's one more thing I want to show to you, which is what happens during the chorus, okay? which is basically the only addition that happens in, in Fever to the Form. But before I tell you that, we could just spend a couple minutes now all together just going around what I've showed you already, because maybe you don't want more information quite yet. I'm gonna give you that information, but we could spend three minutes now just literally kind of bedding in, kind of like just, just solidifying what we've learned so far. I think that might be a good idea just to give you kind of a, to give you a moment's pause before I give you new information. So starting on this, um, starting on this F shape and going slowly, a little bit slower than full speed. Um, let's try it again. And Yeah, let's try it again, basically, uh, and then we'll just go around and around for a bit, just so that you kind of uh, that you kind of get it, get it in your heads. Okay, a one, two, three, two, two, three. And change now.
Okay, so hopefully the strumming pattern combine with the three different chord shapes that run over four bars are combining together and even on top of that many of you out there at home are also getting this hammer on hammer off hammer on hammer off which is totally consistent through each chord through all the chord changes and in fact through the whole song. And it's one of those reasons, it's this seed, it's a seed that allows everything we do just adds to this, but right at the beginning, well, so should I say right at the middle, is this, is this seed that doesn't change, it doesn't move, everything else moves and adds, but that stays on. So those are the three kind of components that I've kind of taught so far, is that strumming pattern in the right hand, then the way I'm playing these chord shapes, and that hammer on and off motif, which is a very distinctive feature of Fifth to the Form. Now, you'll know that when we get to the chorus, which is a kind of a hummed chorus, um, something changes at the chorus, but not much changes. Okay, so basically the whole chorus of the song, so the first verse, right, goes, uh, should we sing the first verse together? And then we'll get to the chorus and then we'll all be on the same understanding of the location within the song. And then, uh, then I can show you the very simple thing that happens at the chorus. Okay, so let's all do this together. Um, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. One. So where the music or We live by one of the two By one of the two So go on, fill your heart up with gladness Not a moment too soon Not a moment too soon But should we ration the reason been sure, but I will follow the feeling, sing fever to the form, okay here comes the chorus, all of my fever to the form. The second verse, the very thing that you're afraid of, that keeps you clean but unclear, is the dirt that you're made of, and that's nothing to fear. So that whole chorus there is just one moment, and I'm going to break it down now and go in and show you what happens there. It's very, very simple. The same fundamental structure doesn't really change. We just reharmonize the first chord, right? So our chord sequence, as you know, is made of three chords. The first one lasts for double duration and it's this F shape and then we have for single durations for single bars this A minor shape and this G shape now this first position this F shape is what changes in the chorus and what we do is essentially we take the thumb off that's the chorus and that opens out the low E string which is why we've got this capo here in the first place this is why the whole can't stand the capo is set up in this way that we cover five of the strings but not this low E string because at the moment of the chorus the floor drops out of the song. This floor drops out of the of the uh, of the chord pattern of the, of the guitar work. Okay, so um, everything else stays the same. So the rest of your F shape and the on off finger doing the on off motif doesn't change. And that's really important. Like you keep going, what you keep the structure steady, but you modify the structure so that we've dropped the bass note out, and that creates the whole feeling of the chorus. So we've got 
Um, I will follow the feeling. This is the end of the first verse. Follow the feeling, feeling. The same fever to the form. All of my fever to the form. See that E string buzzing there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you go on to the other chords as normal. So the A minor shape. Mm -hmm. And then we would be going into the the second verse. It's just the back to normal. Make your the very thing you're afraid of, and we're back to the, the same thing. Afraid of. And we go all the way through the second verse until we drop out that, that low E string that keeps you clean but unclear. We're in the second verse now. Clean but unclear is the dirt that you're made. Second verse you're made of. But that's nothing to fear. And here we do the same trick again as the chorus. But how do I know what you're thinking? Maybe I thought it before. Maybe that's why I'm. We go back to the F shape. I'm at your window. Of course we've got Hear me at your door Sing and give me some more Now here, at this point of the song, right, the peak of the whole thing We make one exception And I personally had written this song And I was like, I'm never changing the chord durations We make some of the modifications, like we drop the low string out for the chorus uh, But other than that, like the structure is solid And then my musical partner Dan Carey, who produced the songs and um, who oh, well, I, ma I made this song, two of us made this song together, we, we did everything together, more or less. Um, he came up with one suggestion here, he was like, when you sing, hear me at your door, sing, give me some more, this third chord, we should hold on to it for double as long to create this like suction tension that releases with the income of the drums and the peak of the song. So here is the end of the second verse, and one exception to the structure of the chord durations. We have this third chord, the G shape. As you all know, because you all know this song really well, you know at this point before the drum comes in and we're all going, give me some more. We stay there for a little bit longer, for double the, the length, for two bars on that third G shape chord, rather than one bar. And that creates a tension, creates a suction, creates a vacuum that we then flood. We let go, we fill it with the, with the peak of the song and in come the drums and everyone's crying and, it's, and that's what happens. Okay, so let me show you that again. So we're in the second verse, we've gone look from the minor. How do I know what you're thinking? So there's that low string there. Maybe I thought it before doing it a bit slower than normal Maybe that's why I'm at your window Hear me at your door Sing and give me some more Stay there Oh, Now the rest of the song from here on in the song is in three parts There's the intro, the first verse, the first chorus there's the second verse leading up to this tension moment here. And the third stage of the whole song is the entire outro. And from this point in, we never play the F chord again. We now only play its relative minor, the D minor shape with the low E string here. Okay. Now I've been teaching it to you like this. Whoa, fever to the floor. I actually do one modification out there for all you geeks, right? For anyone who's got long fingers like me, I found that this relative minor shape is a little bit muddy down the bottom end because you've got a seventh in there. So I just move it up to make an octave. 
can you see that? And anyone who's been watching the tabs out there that my wife did this morning that I posted in my stories and that I posted on the feed, you'll notice it's got this. It's a bit of a monster guitar stretch, that is. 